Hello guys, welcome to one of three videos that are going to help you get into TOB. This run is going to be the Ranger role, and we're going to cover the melee and the Major role in separate videos. Uh, they're all going to be really similar, and these are all walkthrough style videos. This example is going to be a quote-unquote Menta Raid. We're going to have four players. Uh, this could be a three-man or a five-man, but four is a really nice scale. We're going to have one Menta, one Helper, and two Learners. Now, both my, my, both, like, pretty much everyone is like acting their roles to display how this raid is going to look. Um, and I am acting as a learner to show you guys what kind of gear and how you should play and what you should look out for as a learner. If you want to get into these kind of raids and learn TOB, have a look at the, dis at the Discord description. Um, it's uh, at the description of the video. It's going to have the Discord link. And this is a Discord I've set up to help players learn TOB. There's tons of mentors, tons of helpers. And if you want to get in, try and be proactive. Tell people you want to raid and try it out. Don't be afraid to fail. Go in with other learners and get some experience, and mentors will come along and help you. There's three mentor raids going on, four mentor raids, in fact, going on right now. Um, and I know there's a lot of you who've done TOA and are yet to get into TOB because of this lack of teams and lack of teachers. So this is what the entire thing is designed to do. Uh, jump on it, give it a go. Top is a really fantastic raid, uh, albeit with a really difficult barrier to entry. So we're here to alleviate some of that. And uh, again, this is a walkthrough. This is one of three. This is the ranger roll. And it's a bit staged, but we're still playing slow. And I'm still going to show you a couple of mistakes, but also, again, what you should be looking out for and trying to do. So this is our setup. Um, I do have a Ultra ring. I should have a Berserker ring for a true learner setup, but that's OK. You could also take a magic potion instead of heart, and that would be like a min gear. You can adjust this to what you need, but there are minimum requirements for the Discord, so do try and work on them. Um, but if you have better gear, let the mentor know. They can guide you to what you need to wear. So let's get started. Um, again, this is a bit of a staged raid as an, as an example. So my team is all ready to go, and they're all in VC and doing their thing. But it is still going to look and feel like a mentor raid. The only difference is that a mentor is going to be guiding you through the rooms. They're going to be shot calling and telling you what to do, like brew, move here, do this, do that. And you're not going to hear that in this raid. Instead, you're going to hear me. So here we go. Let's go get our potions ready. This whole setup, this tab is in the Discord along with a bunch of other resources, which are really good. So do check them out. Um, I'm just going to take them as I do here. Your setup will differ very slightly depending on what you're doing and who you're going with. And your mentor may ask for certain specific things, and that's completely fine. But we've got a ton of brew, four restores, three combat parts, and a range part. And again, we're doing the ranger roll. When we enter, Warhammer equipped, melee gear plus Warhammer. This is our base setup, and a lot of the time you're going to refer to this to know what to switch to. We've got our range setup on top left and our mage setup on top right, and then specialist equipment on the second or on the third row. Before we start Maiden, we're going to drop something, in this case an anglerfish. You could drop a salve or a brew, doesn't matter. And then we're going to pray mage and piety before we enter. I'm going to be setting the rooms for these guys, and they're going to go and enter when I say so. So we're going to do two, two special attacks, in this case two Warhammers. I'm just going to send them no matter what. Now I'm going to move back and click my range gear and rigor. I need to watch Maiden to see when she throws blood. This line here is the blowpipe line. This line back here is the Tebow line. So Maiden moves and I move. It's a nice easy way to remember. If Maiden moves, I move. Let's see Maiden. Maiden moves, I move. And this means that when she throws blood as part of her attack, I dodge it. So let's see. Maiden throws blood, I move. But more like Maiden moves, I move. The two guys on freezer rolls are going to get the crabs, and we are going to cover freezing in separate videos. Notice there's a crab out here away from the clump, and I'm going to go deal with it. I need to go and kill it. The clump itself is dealt with by the mages. You can see it's being maged. And I just, otherwise, I just attack boss. There's more crabs, and you just need to focus clicking maiden and dodging maiden attacks. So maiden moves, I move. And you'll get better at recognizing when blood is thrown or when it's a base attack. Let's watch Maiden. Just a regular throw. Okay, I didn't have to move, and you can get better at this over time. Let's use a dose of Restore. Watching Maiden, let's move. And this time it was blood, so we dodged it correctly. Good. Notice there's no Stragglers crabs, which is, a which is okay. And here come the next lot. This is not for us to deal with. Again, we just attack Maiden. We're a DPSer. Maiden attacks, and I move, just to be sure. If you get hit by blood, don't worry. It does a bit of damage, not more. This is what it's going to look like. You take some damage, damage. Let's move, let's move. And ideally, you get out of it a bit earlier than that, or you dodge it entirely if you're careful. If you stand in blood, more of these guys are going to spawn. Your mentor may ask for you to attack these guys, um, but for the most part, DPS on Maiden is important. So let's keep watching Maiden. There, she moved, so I'm going to move, and this time I dodge blood. Good. And that's really what your Maiden should look like with competent teammates. Um, we are going to show freezer rolls and what you need to do to make sure to freeze crabs. It's not going to be perfect every time, but more practice equals better raid. So keep working at it. We're moving on to bloat now. 
And what we're going to do is equip our salve and eat our anglerfish, and then we're going to put on our whip. You can start hits with a crystal halley if you have one. Uh, if you have claws, I'd recommend doing two dumping claws. Just use your special attacks on claws, they're really good. But otherwise you can use chally to start the kill and maybe end it. Um, it's a bit weird with a chally, so even just whipping regularly is completely fine. For this room, we're going to be praying rage the entire time and piety. So we need to be careful of Bloat's position. I've marked him with a tile radius to know where he is and see him through walls, like this for example. And what we're going to do is when, we, when he goes down, we go in and attack him. And we do four to five attacks depending on how early or late we are. So he's gone down now, we can enter. And we're really early. We got here like nearly first. So I'm going to do five attacks. That's two. That's three. That's four. And I can do Chally for last attack and then run away. Switch back to my whip and my defender. And I've gone back early, but safe is, safe is better than sorry. And now we need to like stay opposite bloat. So let's try and stay opposite here, watching the hands. I'm like mostly watching the ground, but I'm like paying attention to where bloat is. And I'm moving my camera at the same time. I'm just watching where bloat is. I'm trying to stay ahead of the group. You don't want to be too far behind. You want to stay further ahead of anything. Let's stay far ahead. Clicking clef. I'm not clicking like far out here. I'm just clicking close towards me. Bloat's turn, so let's try him around the corner. Keep moving, keep moving, keep moving. And he's gone down so we can click him. Now in this time, I'm late to bloat. So let's do four attacks. One. Two. Three. And if I have a chally, I can use it at the end. So there's the fourth. And let's run away. Notice that in this case, I think they might be able to get it. They might risk it. They might not. They're playing it safe, which is what they should do for a learner raid. And then let's get away from bloat. Don't try and greed hits when learning. Even when you're a good player, don't try and greed hits. Um, it's really not worth the deaths and the time loss. Just play it safe is always better. We're just staying opposite bloat, trying to move very carefully, dodging the hands on the ground where we can. If you do get hit, don't worry too much. It's not the end of the world. You'll take a bit of damage. You can brew and start moving shortly. It looks a bit like this. You take a bit of damage, try and spam move, try and brew. You can, you can spam brew and spam panic brew, and that's completely fine, and just run. Basically do everything you can to stay alive. You've got loads of supplies, so don't be afraid to use them. Right, next room. Uh, let's, let's put our torture back on. We're going to drop ourselves. You should have a surplus of them, make a lot more. We're going to buy one stem and a piece of hard food, either a potato or a shark, and then let's go through. Now Nilo for a ranger is really easy. What we're going to do is we're going to drop a brew somewhere up here, it doesn't matter, maybe like the two dose, I'll just drop that, get rid of it, make some space in the inventory. And um, you can shuffle your stuff however you like it. And we're just going to go in immediately, it's a really easy room to explain. So I'm going to go to my range gear. And I need to remember, I can always melee a bit, or mage a bit in this room. Rigor on, I'm going to use ranging pot, and I'm going to click green. That's it. That's the entire room. Like, no joke. Now, there are ways to improve Nilo, and I'm going to sip a stam dose as well, because I'm moving about a lot. But anytime I see a green Nilo, I'm going to go click it. My camera angle is going to be facing like this, so I can see all three. Don't have it like this, because you can't see anything. Have it like this. Nice and high up, and I'm going to click green. You can always right click to make sure you're clicking the Toxabolas which is a nice little thing to do. So I can right click here to not get confused between the two if they're like close to each other. And you can also right click to queue, next, to queue the next NPC up. This big one here is an aggro. If they're attacking players in the center of the room, kill them quickly. So for example, in this bit, I can right click, and I can right click, and I can right click. And if you get this timing down, you get a really nice rhythm. But for the most part, this guy's in the center. We need to clear him quickly. He's the aggro. And any aggros are a bit of a menace. So try and get them quickly. Now the entire room is basically scripted, which means that the Nilos that come in from different areas are always going to do the same thing. And the only thing that is not known in the room is when you kill a big one, like this big aggro here, which i got to kill, this big aggro is going to split into two crabs. And these two crabs are unknowns. These guys can be completely random. So it was a major and a melee. That's the random part of the room. Everything else is preset, which means crabs go to the same places. The same aggros are always aggros. And if you want to get good at Tob and Nilo, you can learn this stuff. So for now, I'm just trying to kill everything that's green, clicking on it, maybe right-clicking on it. And notice that a lot of us are staying near the center of the room. This is because after a period of time, Nilos on the edge of the room can explode. And if they explode, it deals damage, and that's not great. So if I'm over here, try not to be over here DPSing. Try and be like back to the center of the room. It'll keep you a bit more safe. As Nilo progresses, it's going to get a bit more tricky with more Nilos and more aggros. So let's start praying against stuff in the center of the room. I'm going to put on melee pray for now, but I'm going, to, I'm going to adjust it as needed. Now let's use some super restore, staying high on prayer, and we can right click more green or just click green wherever it is and try and get some more damage out. 
Again, if there's no green in the room, maybe I can switch to melee and go and attack a melee crab or two and contribute. Doesn't matter if I'm maging or meleeing, doesn't matter. Put our gear back on and let's uh, pray mage. There's lots of mages coming. Your mentor may give you calls on what to pray and what to do. There's this big green one in the middle. This guy is aggro. Let's kill this guy. And now the aggros are dead. We can go back to clearing the pillars. At this point where it's a bit hectic and that's okay. You can right click to get the ones on the pillar if you're not sure where they are. And this is completely fine. Ranger is a pretty interesting fun role. That damage there was, an, was someone exploding on the pillar. Let's pray mage. Still getting attacked. This is good. So you don't want to be too close to the pillars. See the melees are getting exploded a bit. They're getting exploded a lot now because they're close to the pillars near the end of the room. This is something that's going to happen as a melee and honestly just brew. We have loads of supplies. So at the end of this room, maybe like a dose of brew, dose of restore just to get like high stats and then I can use a dose of super combat and a dose of range pot. At the end of the room, I'm going to switch into my melee gear and if you want to use claws, you can use them here or chally is kind of fun as well. I'm going to start with melee. So melee, prey and piety, range, prey, rigor, mage, prey, mage. Let's just use our attacks back into our whip and let's hover over the prayer book. Prayer book first and then we can switch our gear and you can put offensive on at the same time if you want to. So let's get the first bit right. Mage, prey, augury, switch my gear, attack. Back to the prayer book. Range, prey, rigor, range gear, attack. Getting your gear right takes a bit of practice and don't worry if it gets messed up. Just get your prayers right and it doesn't matter if you do something random like this. You can switch your gear. Might get one hit in, that's okay. We're going to try to get like two mage hits or two melee hits or four or five, six pipes. Okay, mage prey, gear, and go. Open my prayer book. Melee prey, piety, melee gear, and go. And take your time. You've got loads of time. Mage prey. You don't really need to play, you don't really need to play augury for mage prey. Melee prey, piety, melee gear, and go. I can even chally here if I want to because I'm early. Range prey, range gear, and go. This is quite an easy room, it's quite a fun room. A lot of advancements you can make, uh, a lot of improvements you can personally make. And uh, now onto a more difficult room. This is Satetsek. <clears throat> we're going to start with our hammer out. And we're going to do one hammer per phase. Your mentor may assign you a role that you need to fulfill uh, for when you need to spec and where you need to stand. But for the most part, it is, again, a fairly simple room. Let's go in. And we're going to put Mage Prey on and Piety and do one hammer. Your mentor will tell you if you need to spec again, but just keep a lookout. And then we're going to go to tiles around the, around the boss. These black orbs are ranged, these red ones are mage. Mage one coming towards me, let's pray. You want to keep, you want to live in your inventory and your prayer. Just make sure you have this open at all times. And you can see when it splits, it splits into a mage and a range. So it splits into a mage, let's pray against it, good. Another one coming towards me, this is mage. And you just need to watch, so there's one coming through the boss now, it's range, there it is. So you need to see where it's going. It's a bit hard to see at first, and if you take damage, I'll show you what it looks like. Here we step on the red. So we just go to the red, click on the red, click on the red, and following mazes is really easy. You just click on the red, and there's really not much more to it. If you get a bit lost, if you get a bit slow, try and follow your teammates. You can see which tiles they move to. It takes a bit of getting used to, but you can follow your teammates to know where to stand. They may also help you by telling you where the last tile is. Let's pray melee coming off the maze, and go on the boss. There's a mage orb coming, and I'm going to use my hammer. Oh, I'm bad. Let's get a hammer spec. Again, your mentor will tell you when or assign you a position to do it. And now we need to see what's going on with the ball. So here it comes. We're going to group up in the center of Satetseg. You can pray melee or mage here if you see a mage orb coming. Once it hits you, you can back off. Don't rush this. Just take it slow. And now we have to see what's going on. So there's a mage orb and it splits, but it's not coming towards us. And when it splits, it can't split again. So there's a melee, which doesn't do anything. Does it do any more orbs? There's one. So he's fired an orb. This is going to split. Coming towards me and I've got to pray mage. Okay. And we get chosen. I've got the maze. So what we're going to do is stand on the first tile here. And we're going to walk it to the third row. So this is now the second row. This is now the third row. So you've got to stand somewhere on the third row to indicate. And now we're going to move quite briefly at the start. So let's move up and across and across and up. And we can move in these like squares. This is completely fine. When you get a bit better, you can do diagonals like this. And you can do movements like this and this. 
But when you're starting, just go for really, really simple movements. Just move like in squares. Back to Satetseg, melee prey piety, let's stand on my tile and let's DPS. We now need to watch where the orbs are going. Now let's imagine for a second I get hit and I'll show you what it looks like, assuming one of these goes to me. In a second it might do. Please? Okay. So I'm praying mage and a range orb is coming. This will turn off my prayer. I'm going to step back and brew. Okay, I honestly got comboed there and that's what Satetseg is like. I got meleeed after my prayer went off and then I got hit by another orb with my prayer off. Even if you brew you might still die. This tells you that prayer matters a lot, and um, if you do die, it's no big deal, your team will clutch up for you, especially in the mentor raids in this discord, but be aware that Satetseg hits pretty hard. So I'm doing my job cosplaying as a learner very well here. The ball is going to hit a bit more damage now that someone's died, so the more people that are dead, the harder this room gets, but again, your mentor should be able to get through pretty happily. It's only got a couple of percent left, and they're going to clutch up for me. Don't worry if you die at top, it's completely normal. That damage stack was like a 70 something, so it happens all the time. And uh, it's part of learning, but try to minimize it, pay attention, and you should be fine getting through the raid. Now I'm going to drop any supplies that aren't full. I can combine my super restores. I'm going to take a sip of this super combat and drop it. A sip of this range pot and drop it. I can bring my stam down. And depending on your prayer level, I would say four to five super restores and the rest brews. So two super combat, a stam, a piece of hard food, Four to five super restores, and then brews. Um, if, you're, if you're high prayer, take four. If you're low prayer, take five. So really I should take four, but this is fine. Now Zarpus is really easy. This room is great fun and uh, not too difficult at all. Let's go through. The first part is uh, going to be standing on Exhumed. So we're going to go and drop maybe two brews just to make some space in our inventory. And we can even get our special attack ready. These guys are going to pop up around the room. And uh, we have different quadrants. So this is like my area. This is, this is like my area over here. And there are four of us. So we each have like a quarter of the room. And um, you can try and help your teammates out by going towards them. So he's gone over here. So if one spawns here, I can move into his quadrant to help him out, for example. And this one over here, whoever gets there first, it's him. So I can run back. Oh, there's one over there. So I can stand on this one now. You know, you can help your team out. But this bit's not very crucial. And the next part's more important. So for Zarpus, we're going to start with a special attack. Gonna pray redemption plus piety for the special, and then we're gonna move to a corner of the room. Blowpipe is really good damage here, so we're gonna use range the entire time. So piety, redemption, make sure we're gonna hammer spec, one and two, and then go into the corner of the room. Corner of the room, switch our gear and put rigor on. We're now gonna start attacking the boss. This is another example of a learner up here. So Darak is cosplaying learner, he, so he just moves as soon as it's come towards him. Okay, let's move. This is what you do. This is the entire room. Doesn't matter which way you go, doesn't matter where you stand really. But we're trying to leave the guys who are meleeing more space. So there's an orb coming towards me, let's move. Waiting for the next orb. This one's not coming towards me, you can see where it's going. But the next one, this one is fired at me. So I need to move. And we're good to go. Now if you get hit by these, it's not a big deal, you just take some poison damage. It's a lot of stack damage, but it's okay, you can just move off it. And the poison damage is very slow. But that's all the entire room is. So let's see the next one coming, wait for it, and then move. You can also move preemptively. This one's coming. And move and attack. Again, you might be getting hit, no big deal. You will survive for the redemption on, but here's the big thing. This is the last room before Verzik. If you have to die, that's completely fine. Just don't use supplies. You need to use all your supplies for Verzik to get through. Um, obviously, if you're the last person alive, use your supplies. When you get this screech above his head, stop attacking. You can see it in chat box as well. Now this is completely fine to just take a second, so let's go to our melee gear and put piety on. These squares are where you need to attack from, and Zarpus is looking towards this corner, so I can go to the corner and wait for him to turn, and now he's looking away from the corner. Again, you move around these, and uh, the idea is like, if he's looking towards this way, he can't look this way when he turns. So he moves away and now I can attack him. I can get two whip hits, and then move to the next one, and if I'm on time I can always get two whip hits. If I'm not good on timing I can get one. Now you can tank the attack if you take a hit, but try not to ideally, just watch and be careful, and don't greed hits. Playing it slow and safe is always better, same as bloat. Right, let's go to Verzik. So, we're going to be swapping Dawnbringer between all four of us at the start. As a learner, you might be asked to drop some brews, so we're going to drop a couple here, and maybe, I don't know, a restore here. This is in case you die, the team can use your supplies to clutch up. Now, it's completely fine if you um, die at Verzik, but try to get through P1 and try to get experience at P2. 
The P1 fight is actually fairly simple. I'm going to run it through as we do it. Uh, we're going to play Mage with melee and attack boss. We look at the orb order on the top left of the screen. I am last on the orb order. So the staff needs to pass hands three times to get to me. So here are the staff attacks. It gets dropped to the second person. And I do, I'm going to do four attacks on boss here and then run back. So four attacks and run back. And now we're going to watch for the clap. There's the clap. We can click Verzik. Two attacks and then back. There's one. Let's get ready to click back. And let's go back. Back, 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 back. Now I'm going to try to take the staff. This is my turn. It doesn't matter if you get it exactly, but try and keep an order to the staff. Two attacks, click back, change your weapon, and drop the staff for the next person. I'm going to go do one attack here and then move back. I was a bit late, so just one. So watch for the clap, watch for the clap, and bang. So you can click exactly when the clap happens. It's a great timer, and then you can get two hits with a whip. And then we click back. Watch for the clap, watch for the clap. There it is, and off we go. Now, you can always click a bit earlier than the clap, and it will get you on time. I'll show you what that looks like. So it's just before the clap goes, and now we're all as a group. Notice the pillar has dropped, so we're going to move to the other pillar. Run, 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 run. Someone might take a hit here getting the staff, and that's okay. Let's do one attack. We're really late here, so let's only do one. And then let's go to the pillar. I need to try and spec at least three times here, so I'm going to take the Dawnbringer and spec. Now, she's really low, so it's going down, so let's get off the pillar. Get off the pillar. If you spam click the center of the room, you'll get off the pillar. And then we're fine. We're using the same position we were in as, uh, at, Z at Zetetzeg, and then Zarpus, and now P2. Piety on, and for P2, start moving. Just move about. Crabs will spawn, and that's okay. We're going to try and dodge them and stay away from them. They explode when they get near you. So this one, it's going to get near me. I'm going to try and run away, and it explodes. Sometimes you won't be close enough to let it explode, so you have to try again. Now, the main thing is to dodge these things. To do that, you just have to move whenever Verzik attacks. So you can do this little walk pattern. You can move around, then you won't take damage. What we're going to try and do is use these three tiles to attack. We're going to move in and out. So what we're going to do is we're going to keep moving. And then when Verzik attacks us, I'm going to brew here because uh, that shouldn't have really happened, but it's okay. When Verzik attacks, I'm going to click her. You ready? Watch for the attack. Go. And then back out. And then in and back out. In and back out. We're gonna, I, I use the dose of super combat there as well. And we're just going to go in and back out every time she moves. Wait for the movement. Click and back out. Wait for the movement. Click and back out. If you're not sure, just take a breather. Step out for a minute. There's crabs coming. Let's run away. This one's on me. Let's keep moving. And then it, you might deal a bit of damage to you. That's okay. Just use some brew and keep moving. Brew and keep moving. Brew and keep moving. You don't want to stop moving. You stop moving, this is going to happen. You get hit. So you got to keep moving, keep moving, keep moving. Okay, let's use some super combat. Keep moving and wait for the next attack. And go. And back out. Attack and back out. And you'll find this cycle over time. You'll get really good at this, and it shouldn't really be a problem. If you ever get low, and low is like 60 HP, use Brew. Use Brew, try and move. Use Brew, try and move. At 35% these crabs spawn, we're going to do Mage Prey and attack twice. Once. Twice. And we're going to start moving about to dodge this shit that she throws at us. You can attack the crab more if it's not low HP yet, but you want to keep moving in case you get attacked. Okay, let's get ready, and attack, and out. Attack, and out. You can find a really nice rhythm here. Attack, and out. Attack, and out. She stopped moving, so now's the next crab. Two hits, and assess. So let's just get back into position and get ready. And attack, and out. Attack, and out. If you make a mistake, for example, I'm standing here, and you get the wrong timing, you might get attacked or you might get bounced. All this might happen to you, in which case, be careful. Start brewing. Move and brew, move and brew. If I'm like, you know, again, 60 HP, I might be killed. So don't be afraid to use all your supplies if you need to. And once Verzik dies, or even right now, I can take my, I can take my excess supplies. So I've got some supplies on the ground, I'm going to grab them, and we're going to get ready. So attack, back, attack, back. In and out. Duck and weave. Great. So we're into P3, let's brew up again. Use some Restore, click the boss, maybe some Super Combat, and let's see who's tanking. Not me, so let's just focus on our prayers and get them right. Range is green, like this, just pray range, and Mage is big blue. Now there's going to be different things happening here, got to be aware of them. I'm not going to show you how to run webs fully, but I am going to show you the timing to set it up. For the most part, during webs we're going to mage. So there's only one crab that spawned, and it's frozen, so that's not our problem. But just keep a lookout in general. Otherwise we just keep attacking. If you want to learn to tank, the way to do it is to wait for Verzik to attack you. 
and then you wait a second, and then you go under. Wait for the attack, and then you go. Go under, wait for the attack, and then you go. Now in this case it's webs, so I can't show you more, but whenever webs happens, get your mage gear on, do an attack and run around. Mage gear is not too bad, you will deal some damage. What you don't want to do is run too close to the guys running webs. So you want to be quite far away. You can also take the time to brew and move. Brew and move. It doesn't matter if you do too much damage. Now we're not going to try and proc 20% just yet. Want to be a bit careful. Instead we can go and practice tanking for a second. Now it's getting close to 20%, so we're going to wait. Going to pray mage. Getting fairly close here. And we're going to spread out a little bit. Your mentor will tell you to do this. So they'll call it in chat for you, or call it in VC, so just listen. And we're going to see where these go. Okay, there's one right here. Let's go stand on it. Doesn't matter. There'll be roughly one in each area. And let's brew. Even more supplies used. Chug it down. Let's go attack the boss. And now we've got to watch out for our tornado. So there's tornadoes. Let's run away from them. Run away, run away, run away. This one's mine. I can tell it's coming towards me. So let's run away from it. My main job now is to stay away and maybe get an attack in here and there. Run away, run away, run away. Notice I missed my prayer, so let's try and get the prayers added in. Let's attack the boss. If the ball comes for you, you've got to be high HP, but it's dead. And that's pretty normal. Verzik won't survive much longer after 20% if people click boss and don't heal. So we're going to have two more of these videos, one covering the melee role and one covering the mage roles. Um, but if you guys want some more examples, <laughs> thank you so much. And make sure to thank your mentors. They're doing a good service for you. So, um, we're going to do two more raids just like this example. It's going to be uploaded on the same day. If you're interested in them, check it out. And again, if you want to join on this kind of raid, these mentor raids, join from the link in the description, and uh, I'll probably put a comment as well. But let's move on to the other roles. See you guys there.